In this video, I'll be giving you something I've never shared publicly before. It's my playbook for Google Shopping ads that my team and I use to manage over $50 million worth of Google Shopping ads revenue. Hi, I'm Daryl and I run a PPC agency called Big Flare. In it, we specialize in e-commerce PPC and as you can imagine, Google Shopping ads is a pretty big piece of what we do. The playbook I will share with you today functions as a checklist of stuff for you to do. If you make sure to tick every box on the list, you'll have built the solid foundation for a high performing campaign. And hang around till the end because at the end I will give you an actual checklist template that you can use to help put this stuff into action. Now the playbook actually has two chapters. In chapter one, we will start with Google Ads and the things you need to do in there. Chapter two focuses on Merchant Center and your product feed. All right, so let's dive into chapter one. And the first thing you need to do is make sure your campaign structure is solid. Make sure your campaign naming convention is logical and consistent. This will make things so much easier to find and manage later on. A simple naming convention that you could use would be something like standard or smart dash shopping dash country dash campaign segmentation. Start by mentioning whether this is a standard or smart shopping campaign. Add shopping after that because this makes filtering by campaign title later on uh, a bit easier. It's important to target only one country per campaign, so add the country you are targeting in the campaign name. And then for the final part, you want to make sure you add a campaign segmentation that suits you. For example, you can break out campaigns by product category, brand versus non-brand, ROAS target, or whatever makes sense for you. The next thing to do is to make sure your product group structure is segmented well, according to the type of shopping ads you are running. The structures I recommend running are either single product ad groups or SPAGs for standard shopping, or, if you are that way inclined, single product per product group for smart shopping campaigns. The main benefit of SPAGs, or single product per ad group, in standard shopping is being able to add negative keywords at the product level by adding those negs to the ad group. Now, in smart shopping, we don't have negative keywords, so the SPAG structure is not needed. Instead, for smart, I recommend using a simpler single product per product group structure. This means that you can lump all your products into one big ad group per campaign. No problem. Just make sure to subdivide your product groups down to the item ID level. Once you've set up your structure, the final thing here is to make sure that your product group structure is regularly refreshed. For simple accounts with product lines that don't change much, this can easily be achieved by having a manual reminder for yourself to update the structure whenever a new product comes in or goes out. For more complex structures, automation is definitely key. Software like optimizer.com can help with this. Or if you are like me, uh, you can go and develop your own script that does it for you. With software like Optimizer, you will pay a monthly fee. Whereas if you develop your own script, you only need to pay in your time or money just the one time. Next, for your bid strategies, you want to make sure you are using target ROAS automated smart bidding. Furthermore, you want to make sure that you are using portfolio bid strategies and that you are grouping as many campaigns as you can across all campaign types into as few portfolios as possible. This helps to group your conversion data into larger pools, which in turn allows the machine to predict conversion rates better and bid more efficiently. Of course, no good Google Ads campaign is going to run without accurate conversion tracking enabled. This one is just so intrinsic to every type of campaign in Google Ads that actually, on the version of my Shopping Ads playbook my team uses, we don't even have conversion tracking on there. It's just so obvious and we've already set it up way before we even thought of starting the shopping campaigns that we don't even need it on there. So first up, make sure conversion tracking is set up and reporting conversions correctly. And then the second check in conversion tracking is to make sure that you are passing revenue correctly back to Google Ads as well. So make sure the area in the conversion tracking code is correctly customized to report the sales revenue back to Google. 
If necessary, you can check all of this is working correctly by installing the Google Tag Assistant extension for Chrome and then running through a test conversion on your site while that tag is switched on. Okay, on to Google Merchant Center and product feed things. And the first few points I'm gonna give here are to do specifically with your feed. Make sure you have awesome product titles. Here are the four checkpoint items for writing great product titles. Keyword rich, variants, brand, and 70 to 150 characters. Keyword rich means that you need the best keywords for your product in your title. When I say variants, I mean that if your product is split by variant in a way that is meaningful to your customer, then write that in the title. For example, if you sell clothing in different colors, well, people often are looking for specific colors, so include that variant info in the title. Brand means that you want to include your product brand and your store brand, if that's different to the product brand, in your title too. And the fourth point means don't go over 150 characters because that is the limit, but equally write at least 70 characters because anything less than that and you have not utilized valuable keyword targeting space that could get you more clicks and sales. Next item in your feed to take care of is your image. Ensure your image is high quality, distinctive, and shows the product very clearly. Remember, people will be viewing these ads on mobile, so make sure your product is big in the frame because on mobile, the whole image will be smaller. There's an attribute in your product feed that people often miss, and that is the product type. Unlike the Google product category, where you have to select from a predefined list, with product type, you can write whatever you want, and you can go four levels deep with it. So make sure the product type is keyword rich and the full four levels deep. For example, if you sell egg timers, it'd be rubbish to have a product type that just said egg timer. Instead, you could have something like kitchen accessories, cooking gadgets, lifestyle electronics, egg timer. Notice how keyword rich with generic keywords, I made that product type. Do the same for your geographic setup. Make sure you have one feed per country setup for each country you can ship goods to that you want to target. And while we are on this point, make sure you do this for every possible country. If you have worldwide shipping, then you might as well do this for every available country with a decent sized English speaking population. Check over your product description and make sure it is fully fleshed out and keyword rich. What I mean by this is it should once again be keyword rich with keywords that are relevant to your product. And it should also actually describe your product in easy to understand English. Product descriptions do have a minimal impact on your keyword discovery, but it doesn't exactly hurt to make sure they are written properly. Okay, all these points so far have related to the main areas of your product feed. The final thing I will say on the product feed will cover all the other product feed attributes. When it comes to all other available fields in the feed, make sure you utilize everything. Fill out the feed as fully and as richly as you possibly can. These fields don't all apply to everyone, but if your product can add the color, age group, gender, material, pattern, dimensions, or any of the other items available, then make sure to fill in all of that and fill it in fully and correctly. The more the merrier. Aside from powering your Google Shopping ads, another powerful feature that is driven by your product feed is your dynamic remarketing campaign. These are the ads that will retarget previous visitors to your store with images of the exact products they have been looking at before. The main thing you want to do here is just to make sure it is working. Running you through the setup process for this is beyond the scope of this video. Perhaps that will be a future video. But basically, you want to make sure that your feed has no errors specific to dynamic remarketing that would prevent it from working. If there were any errors, these would show up in your diagnostics window in Google Merchant Center. Talking about diagnostics, it's important to keep track of this tab in Google Merchant Center and ensure that you have no red flags and no yellow warnings. Red flags are the priority here, as these things actually stop products from running and directly hit your bottom line. Yellow warnings are lower priority. Sometimes they may impact your profitability, sometimes not so much. In either case, it's always best practice to find and eliminate yellow flags wherever possible. 
One thing in shopping ads that makes a big difference in standing out from your competition is correctly displaying your product ratings on your ads. To do this, you want to head over to the programs in Google Merchant Center and make sure that customer reviews and product ratings are enabled. But that's not all. You also need to make sure that either third party review feed is attached or Google customer reviews is set up. If you are using a third party review service such as stamped.io, Yopo or trusted reviews, make sure they are actually feeding that information into Merchant Center. There's an area in Google Merchant Center where you can check this. If you are not using a third party review service, and by the way, you probably should be, then Google Customer Reviews is a free option that does the same thing. You can set that up in Merchant Center, but be warned, it is annoying to set up and a lot less powerful than using a third party provider. Now, I just showed you the Merchant Center programs area and, and yes, customer and product reviews are two of the most important programs that you can set up in all cases, but they are not the only programs available. Not every program is going to be relevant to every advertiser. For example, local inventory ads only apply to advertisers that have physical retail locations. However, whatever situation your business is in, you want to make sure to set up every relevant program for you on that screen. Other programs include free product listings, buy on Google, promotions, and market insights. None of these programs hurt, most of them are useful, so to get the most out of shopping, set up every single one that you can. One of the things to note is that your product feed does not refresh in real time. Instead, there is a refresh frequency that you can set under the feed settings. Make sure that you set the maximum available refresh frequency. If your feed is fetched from a URL, this will be daily. But if your feed is not being fetched from a URL and instead you are plugging in via FTP, you can refresh your feed more than once per day. So just make sure your feed is set up to refresh as frequently as possible. And so there you have it, my $50 million Google Shopping Ads playbook. Now, if you would like to get the playbook in an easy to use checklist format, just look below in the description for a link to where you can grab my template. And if you liked this video, please click like, subscribe, and the bell button right now. I release three videos like this per month, so, Subscribe and stay updated.